Hey, a player, if you've recently been rejected by someone that you like and you just can't get over your hurt feelings, don't worry. I have a solution for you that I think is going to help you out and I'll share it right after this. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh and every single week I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. So if you want to learn and grow, hit the subscribe button and make sure to click on the notification bell. Rejection is one of those topics that we don't really like to think about or talk about because it brings up bad feelings. It brings of bad memories and bad moments in our lives. It brings up a time where we felt inadequate, unloved, and uncared for. You know what I'm talking about. You have these real deep feelings for someone and you want to just get to know them better and talk to them. So when you finally work up the courage to do so, it doesn't really go anywhere. But that doesn't mean that your feelings go away. You're just still sitting with them, not sure what to do with them because that person doesn't like you back. Well, one of the most important things I've learned over the years is that if you continue interacting with your crush the same way that you did before you got rejected, then you're not going to be able to mentally get over that hurdle and feel like, hey, this person doesn't like me, it's time to move on. Instead, if you keep talking to them every single day, joking around as if nothing actually happened, as if they didn't actually turn you down, well, then you're going to maintain that level of hope and think, well, even though they rejected me, maybe I can change their mind. Maybe they just weren't sure, or maybe they just are not ready to date me yet. All hopeful ideas, and while they are possible, they're not always practical. We're just always kind of hoping that our crush is going to be the one that's going to take the action step here. Our crush is going to be the one that's going to limit their interaction with us, they're going to talk to us less, they're going to realize that we have feelings for them, and they're going to kind of change their behavior based on that. But the truth of the matter is, the change has to come from us. Think about it from your crush's perspective. Before they found out that you liked them, things were normal. You guys would interact, you'd joke around, you'd talk every so often. They didn't know how you felt, and because of that, now that they do know how you feel, they're going to want things to go right back to the way that they were before they found out. But that's just not how life works. Things are different now that you've put yourself out there and shared your feelings with them. For your crush, they may want things to go right back to how they were before you've done that. But now that they are different, it's important for you to stop reading so much into their cues, to stop looking at every action that they take, every word that they say, everything that they do as a sign that they may be interested in you. This is a common mistake that a lot of people who are hurt make. I call it the friend zone loop. Basically what it is, is that you convince yourself that if you keep flirting or talking to or just trying to get to know your crush better, even after they've rejected you, eventually you're going to change their mind. So you look for these little cues that they give you. Maybe they smiled at you. Maybe they said hello. Maybe they texted you out of the blue. Those are signs that you're still in the game in your mind. So you continuously try for them. And the major problem here is that when you finally realize that this just isn't working out for me, this person doesn't like me back. Boom, that's when the text message pops up with them saying, hey, how's it going? And now you feel like you're back in the game. And I don't think people are voluntarily choosing to do this. I think it's simply because they're not taking the active steps that they need to, to kind of break out of this process, to change things up, to get over those hurt feelings. And a major part of that getting over process is to talk about your feelings, but to not make your crush the center of those conversations. This is something a lot of people do when they like someone they're constantly talking to their friends about them. Not so much about how they can move on and get over it, but how they just didn't understand why their crush texted them, or what happened when their crush looked at them, or when's the next time they can have a conversation with them. You become so focused on trying to make things work rather than seeing things for what they are. And maybe the advice you're getting in life is kind of split. Some of your friends are telling you you should still go for it despite getting rejected because why would they continue talking to you if they didn't like you? While your other friends might be telling you it's not worth your time, it's time to move on, but those tend to be the friends that we ignore because they don't align with the things that we want. If your feelings for your crush is constantly the focus of your conversation with your friends, ask yourself this simple question. When I talk to them about it, am I focusing on proactive solutions that can help me move forward? Or am I focusing on understanding confusing behaviors and actions that my crush takes? If it's the first one, that's good. It means you're on the road to recovery. You're looking for ways out of it. But if it's the second one, that means that you're stuck in this vicious loop, the friend zone loop, and you're not going to get out of it until you're able 
able to move on. It's completely normal to stay in that hurt once we get rejected. In a way, it's a bit comforting to know that we feel bad for ourselves. We're taking care of ourselves by doing that. And the idea of moving on and trying something new and going after new people is scary and foreign and weird to us. It's just not a comfortable thing to do. Think about it. How much of your life are you going to dedicate to chasing this one individual person that you know doesn't like you back when you should be out there pursuing other people, getting to know others, meeting them, interacting with them, seeing who you click with? Trust me on this, taking that step back will give you that much deeper sense of clarity that you're longing for. Now, if you want to learn more about relationships and interactions, you should definitely check out my book Embracing the Awkward where I go more in depth on how to kind of master those connections in your life. And what you should also do is check out the link over here where in this video I kind of talk more about how to deal with rejection and how to get over a crush that you're obsessed with. On that note guys, I'll catch you next time. As always, love and peace.